Friends, at some point in our life, we've been gifted with some kind of a gift. Last Thursday, I was talking to kids because our gospel was where Jesus was talking to the Father and praying for his disciples and saying, I thank you, they are your gift to me. The apostles are your gift to me, Jesus said. So I asked the children at our school, Mass, what do we do when we receive gifts? And a pre-kindergartner said, she's here with us, Sam, said, well, we open them. True, right? It's the first step. When you receive a gift, you unpack it. And I said, what else do you do? The other kid, who is one of the triplets, said, if, I, if it's food, I just eat it. And there were other kids who continued the conversation and said, well, we play with those gifts. And then they said, well, after we are bored, we are able to share with others those gifts and share and play with them. And there were others who said, well, once we are bored and done with those gifts, mom puts them in the attic because then we get the new ones out. And they come out when we have the garage sale. So, so friends, gifts not to be used, they are to be unpacked and then used, and gifts bring us joy. When we share gifts, it brings us much greater joy. Sometimes we descri describe our talents and describe talented people as gifted people. It implies that their talents are not just to thank them for their skill, but to thank someone who has given that gift to them. Life itself is a gift from God in our parents. Last Sunday, Mother's Day, we thank God for our mothers because they carried us in their womb for at least nine months. Without them, none of us would have those qualities and talents. A gift implies a relationship with, between the giver and the recipient, and not just any kind of relationship. A gift implies fondness, appreciation, and acknowledgement. If you give, if you give expecting something in return, it's kind of a bribe, not truly giving wholeheartedly. The Holy Spirit never needs anything from us, yet the Spirit continues to pour out his gifts upon us in abundance. Just as God and our parents work together to give us the gift of life, the Holy Spirit wants to work with us to share the gifts that He has bestowed upon us with others around us so others will experience the joy of having shared these gifts with them. At Pentecost, we see this play out. The Spirit doesn't just inspire the twelve. He sends them out to share the good news. And not just the twelve, the first reading says, people from every nation, the Jews, gathered. And our Lord, Holy Spirit, descended upon them, and they were sent forth to preach the gospel, the good news. The gifts of the Holy Spirit on this Pentecost Sunday that we reflect on, were crowning gifts for the good of the church. We are the church. And for the good of the world. Because we are sent into the world. This Sunday is not just a moment to ask the Spirit for more gifts. Although they are abundant, it is a moment to take stock of all the spiritual gifts we have received and to offer gratitude to God. How many of us baptized? All of us, right? All of us baptized. How many of us received, were confirmed? All of us? Remember, you were sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit? Have we unpacked that? Or is it still there? Not used? Not unsealed? We were sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit to unseal, to unpack it, so that we could share it into the world. Well, today's reflection will remind us that we are called to share those gifts and not 
leave them on the shelf or in the attic. So first of all, friends, we need to know what the gifts of the Spirit are. What are the gifts of the Spirit? Right? Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, right? Fortitude, good counsel, fear of the Lord, piety. These are the gifts of the Spirit. And through these gifts of the Spirit that we need to pray every day, whether we know or not that these gifts are present within us, we need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to, to inspire us to use these gifts. Sometimes when we make decisions, people don't trust that we use the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Well, we'll leave them there. They find some day to recognize that it was the discernment through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Nothing that we do here is done selfishly. It is done selflessly. We are not embracing the gifts of the flesh that Paul talks about or the fruits of the flesh. We are embracing the fruits of the Spirit, which is fruits of love. So, having understood the gifts of the Spirit, let us dive into this, in the fruits of the Spirit. So the flu- fruits of the flesh, and when Paul talks about flesh, he's talking about sin. When he talks about spirit, he's talking about love. So immorality, impurity, to name a few, jealousy, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, and the like. And sexual sins as well. He says, I warn you, I warn you, I have warned you before, That those who do such things, gifts of the flesh, will not inherit the kingdom of God. And the starting part of Paul's letter to the Galatians that we heard today, Paul says, so that you will not do these things. I am helping you out. So what's our mission? What's our purpose in life? If not heaven, what else is our purpose in life? If not heaven, what else is our mission in life? To lead others to heaven. As we pray that great Fatima prayer, lead all souls to heaven. Especially those that in, are in most need of thy mercy. What a beautiful prayer that is. And then the joyful fruits of the Holy Spirit. In contrast, the fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, generosity, self-control. What are the signs that this What are the signs that show that the Spirit, Holy Spirit, is in us, within us, working through us? How would you, how would you know that this action is the action of the Holy Spirit? And whenever someone asks me, as I was talking to you last Sunday about discernment, I tell them, refer to Galatians 5, the gospel, the first, second reading we hear today. This is the passage that helps us in our discernment each day. Every Christian has to engage in a process of discernment. Paul lays down the signs that the Holy Spirit is operating with us, in us, or not operating with us and in us, depending on whether we have embraced the fruits of the flesh or fruits of the Spirit. Whatever path brings more of the fruits of the Spirit in us, that is the path. That is the journey. That is the discernment. That is the will of God that you want to take upon yourselves. That's where the Holy Spirit is truly leading me, you, and all of us in our spiritual path. You know, in the, in the letter of Paul to the Corinthians, he describes what love is. He says, if you speak in human and angelic tongues, but if you have no love, it is meaningless. Love is patient, he says, elsewhere. Love is kind, he says. Love believes all things, hopes all things, bears all things, endures all things. And in the end, Paul says, love never fails. Love never fails. The true love. So the fruits 
of the Holy Spirit love, agape, love, the true selfless love, the great enduring sign of the Holy Spirit in you is love. To love is to will the good of the other. Get this down, that's the principle. To love is to will the good of the other. So when you do that, when your love is such as this, to will the good of the other, then that is joy. Then you try to bring joy in people's lives, which will flow from your true selfless, unconditional love. Then there is peace. They won't be bothered, get impatient. How long is she taking in the grocery store? Let's move on, right? Okay, I'll just drop you at the mall and I'll sit in the car, right? I can't deal with you going for an hour or so, right? If love is patient, you will walk with your spouse. If love is patient, you will walk with your family. If love is kind, you will show kindness, open the door to someone, offer generosity to someone else, offer faithfulness in your marriage, be gentle. How about controlling and having power over our emotions, not shutting down your spouse in a conversation because your principle is to will the good of the other. So why would you be bothered when your spouse is aging and is slowing down in his or her health? You will walk with them. Or even as children, why would that bother you? If love is that sincere, which seeks the good of the other, whether your neighbor, your friend, your spouse, your co-worker, people you socialize and hang out with, worship, love bears all things. Believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. So start with that fruit of love that will lead you to see the good in the other person. And that will take rid, get rid of selfishness. And you will have self-control. And you will have generosity. As Paul says, let's crucify the fruits of the flesh. A good tree bears good fruit. Fruits of the flesh, selfishness, and all those that we listed, envy, jealousy, pride, let us crucify those and let us live these fruits of the Spirit. Fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please rise.